Welcome to the Kind of Nerdy Girls podcast. Fandom. Fun. Funny. Kind of Nerdy Girls podcast. All right, we are recording. I was Yay. Saying we're, we're live, but we're not. At some point we do, I was thinking we need to. We would occasionally do an episode in season one where we actually did it live on Twitch or our YouTube channel. So mm. we'll have to... That's Tia. That's when you prepare your hair and makeup. Yeah, just let me I, know prior to that, then I can actually get prepared. Um, <laughs> <you know? laughs> Otherwise, it's just you know, it's just us and and you know, the, the the three people who I'm sorry, seven people who are patrons who watch this. Thank you guys so much. I found out that my sister in law actually subscribes to our podcast, so that's eight people. Oh, well, yeah, but is she a patron yet? Is she, I mean, no, she can, but, she's just, her, but she listens to the podcast, which I was like, <laughs> oh my God, another person is listening. Yay. <laughs> Isn't it so funny when you find out someone listens and they're like, you have that reaction and they kind of look at you like, don't you expect people to listen? It's like, no, no, no. I, don't <laughs> no. I virtually don't expect anyone to like pay attention to any project that I'm in. Like I like, I think 10 years ago, self-published a book on Kindle yes. and I, I sent it to like all friends, all my family and like no, and like no one bought it. Like no one bought it. Oh my God, or no one read it. Is this still, oh my God, is it still on there? I'm going to go, I'm going to go get it right now. I know. I want uh, it too. <laughs> I have two. This was not me trying for myself. So I was just saying that it's like uh, I was like, it. oh, Tia, Tia, I was like read- about the breaking news. Tia, we you guys, we have a, a published author as part of the oh show now. God. This is huge. Go ahead, Tia. Tell us about your book. <laughs> right, please. Tell me the name of him. <laughs> One of them is called Sleepwalker, and one of them is called The Utopia. And I wrote oh, I them self published. Yeah, this is there. I can get them on Kindle Unlimited. Oh, yeah. my God. Well, so back in the day, I made them like super cheap, like $4.99. And I obviously told everyone and no one like read it, or like someone said to me, they go, Oh, well, I can just send you the money. And I'm like, I'm not telling you it to like get your money i'm telling you because i literally spent like four years writing this and i'd like for some i would rather just give you five dollars than read your book (laughs) i would just pay five dollars for it to sit on my shelf because i pay more for that for other books books to sit on my shelf People don't, people don't realize sometimes and i don't know i'm sure this is in other there's like other people's lives that this Man, happens Tia, to. you wrote a hundred page book i can't even get to a hundred pages <laughs> when you are a creator like and you tell your family and friends about something you are literally begging them to support you like I don't know. Share it on Facebook. Tweet about it. Do something. But don't say, I'll give you $5, but I'm not going to read it. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, as John said, like, one of them's literally, a, like, 100 pages. Like, I didn't write that for nothing. <laughs> I wrote oh, it so man. someone could read it. I'm about to download these bad boys right now. See, oh, there, boy. This is, like, this is crushing my soul right now because I have <laughs> my, I have my book done. And mm-hmm. I've had two, uh, I've had a, I got them. an editor and a publisher look at it. And they've both been like grammatical stuff, but no changes. And I'm like, did I write a good book? It is. Well, Tia, you are a cat fan, so you will appreciate it. But the, the working title right now is Raised by Cats. And it's oh, all of fun. my like heartfelt moments. It kind of explains why I'm so crazy about cats, <laughs> because I like legit have have been like a little padawan to these cats who have taught me all of this stuff, which has helped me help other people. So, I mean, like I have, and, and you know, well, Tia, you probably don't like when you write a book, you have to read it over and over, right? Like oh, yeah. every time someone edits it, every time you go back to it and so, and like, I legit cannot get through Like every time I have to read it, 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 like I have to prepare my soul again because I relive this stuff with my cats and I just sobbed through it. I'm like, I don't know if I want to put this out. 
Do well, it. I love crying. And mm. Also, the worst thing about editing your own stuff, especially for me, because it took years to write these books. So obviously your style changes. So mm-hmm. it's like you wrote it, you edit it, then you let maybe a half a year to a year go by. Then you go back and read it and you're like, I hate all of this. Everything yes. needs to change. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I did have one editor who like sent it back to me and, and she's like, I, she loved the content. She was like, you write like you're on social media and you can't write like that in books. So I fixed it. I'm like, that's like how I write. <laughs> that's my style. Well, you know, when I was in school and I would write for my creative writing professor, he was like, Johnny, you write like you talk and you talk really fast. So you just keep going and you don't stop. <laughs> one time he wouldn't grade one of my papers because there were two, like he counted, like, I don't even know how many run on sentences. And then he was like, I'm not doing this until you fix it. And I was like, dang. <laughs> I mean, hey, K- Katie, I, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 So I know you were having problems before and then I'm like, I can't tell if she's having problems or if she's just like, can we get to this damn podcast? Will you actually uh, tell us about your book? A little bit of A, a little bit of B. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say one last thing is like yes. when I was in school and I learned about certain writers like Jack Kerouac who Mm-mm. it was very like famous for just writing and publishing not even editing not even caring what other people like say just putting out his first thoughts on page and running with it i kind of like got inspired by that style and i'm like i don't really care i'm like i put out what i wanted to put out and that's just it <laughs> yeah yeah that's it and that's kind of like where i'm at like okay i've had enough feedback that it's like that people will read this right or at least like maybe some people will just give me five dollars <laughs> yeah it. just be prepared for people to be like oh i'll support you financially i just won't read the works that took you years and it's full of your passion and all that well, you don't gotta read it you just buy it do what i literally do what i do you know how many authors have made money off of me because their books just are sitting on my shelves <laughs> Yes, but now, Jonna, Jonna, listen, for the next, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a little grace to within the next two episodes in binges and books, I want you to talk about the book that you're reading by Tia. <laughs> oh, no, right, it's been so long since I've written those. <laughs> ah, yay. You know, Tia, how do, you say, how do you say your last name, Tia? Fabi. Fabi, okay. Ooh. I thought so. I mean, well, like, you are, realistic. You, you are like, so fabby. Yes, fabulous. she's so well, fabulous. <laughs> I was going to say, like, realistically, since, like, I come from Italian-American descent, it should be Fabi, but we're so Americanized that it's just been Fabi my whole life. So when people say Fabi, I'm like, yeah, that should be the correct way of saying it, but, like, no one says it like that. <laughs> See, we're all, we're all in the Midwest, and so we're like, Fabi, that must be Fabi. Tia Fabi. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys our uh fun fact is gonna be your favorite nerdy item it's gonna be like show and tell this which will suck for people who are listening your favorite nerdy item that is near you right now so oh. look around find something near you and i am going to officially begin the show Boom, choo, pop, 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 as everyone's leaving to go find something now <laughs> Except Tia. <laughs> I just picked something from my desk. <laughs> I guess we're starting with you, Tia. Welcome to the Kind of Nerdy Girls podcast. Uh, we are a bunch of Kind of Nerdy Girls. We'll be talking about Kind of Nerdy things. Woo, woo. Joining us from Geek Vibes Nation. Woo, 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 woo. It is author Tia. Baby. Woo. Well, I was not prepared, so my favorite nerdy thing that was in uh, arms re- is is uh, Goose from oh, Captain Marvel. Oh, oh my so. gosh. <laughs> so cute. Oh, yeah. you have Goose. I love it. 
Aww. Yeah, so I felt it would be appropriate too, since like you know KJ loves cats. So there you go. I, I do. Wait, wait until you read my book. It's gonna just rip your heart. Out. It's gonna make you love cats, even those of you who hate cats. But, but you can't read my book right now because I haven't put pictures in it yet or published it. Thank you. She'll be telling us all about the latest in gaming. It's Gamer Katie. Boop, 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 boop. Well, hey guys. Uh, hey. My show and tell is very apropos to gaming. It's my Twilight Princess Amiibo. Oh, oh I, I got to like put you in a, th- can you like put that right up to the camera? Th- there we go. It's an Amiibo. Ooh, Aww, amiibo. Wow, Katie live from her office. <laughs> Don't look at it. It's messy. <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> she'll be telling us what's got her weeping <laughs> his producer jada the thing i wanted to get is literally all the way downstairs on my work desk and i wasn't going mm-hmm. all the way down there that's too much work so i just went to my room and my friend got me this cute little captain america pin for oh. christmas but like so but it's like huge right and it's like an actual like pin mm-hmm. right but it's got a kickstand. So oh, I don't have to get it onto anything. <laughs> oh, very <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh. Uh, and woo, hello, my name is KJ. And I just looked around the room because I have this like gigantic world of nerd, and I can't I can't put it in front of the camera, but can you guys see my puppet spike back there? Oh, that's what that is. Is that what that is? That's what I thought it was. Yeah, that is puppet Spike. When they did the puppet episode of Angel, Spike was never actually a puppet, but for some reason they put out a collector's edition uh, puppet Spike. And so I always forget it's such a. I forget it's back there and it freaks people out. Uh, I've never actually seen that. You haven't seen puppet Spike? No, I've never seen it. As many times as I've been to your house and in your office. That's as close as I can get the camera without Creepy. unplugging it. He's sitting, he, he, uh, Puppet Spike is my print manager. So he oversees everything that I print. <laughs> he makes uh, sure that the printer has paper in it. Yeah. So I've been printing a lot of labels lately for my, my cat calming remedies. Uh, so Spike is it calming is- cats all around Indianapolis. It is. I'm getting, <laughs> you know, like, listen, I don't want to like, just like Tia here. I'm not here to promote myself. I, although we should, fun. like, maybe we would, you know, not have to have jobs if we promoted ourselves but it is like these are things i've used with my cats forever and so i know that they work but i just started putting them out for people so when i get these reviews or pictures of these cats who've never got along and now they're laying in bed together i'm like oh it works (laughs) <laughs> look, <laughs> look, my stuff works. And also, I do have this. Do you guys remember Groot? He was at. Oh, uh, do I at, remember Groot? He was at PopCon with us, and I couldn't figure out what. Do you know what he what to do with this guy, Tia? Because I didn't. Yeah, see, he's got a bottom that comes. I took his <laughs> bottom off. Uh, this is a uh, very explicit. Yeah, the, you, put you gotta out, put you, you gotta put an NSFW like uh, warning here, <laughs> right? Wait, so you put me. you put his bottom under your shirt, and then he can mm-hmm. sit on your shoulder, and he doesn't move because there's a little magnet, so he just stays mm-hmm. on your shoulder. So I'm just gonna keep Groot on my shoulder here for the rest of the podcast. I know that somebody right now is like, I need to see this so bad that I am gonna go give three dollars to the kind of nerdy girl <laughs> to become a patron. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so we are gonna kick things off with the Chris Evans update. Wah, wah, you wah, wish that you're a patron wah, when KJ does this. Wah, wah. It is time for the Chris Evans update. Wah, 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 wah. For those of you who are watching the podcast, I'm sorry, but this is a picture of Chris Evans with a freaking mustache again. <laughs> Ooh, bring me pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a little uh, trailer. Wow, that looks teaser. horrible. It's right? terrible. So no, you know what's bad we... about this? The haircut yeah. plus the mustache. Yes. So, yeah, K- Katie, can you describe the Chris Evans that you are looking at right now? Well, 
He is wearing what I'm pretty sure is my grandpa's shirt. It is mustard yellow with stripes. And it is kind of a sweater, but not really. He's got the pinky ring, so he must be, I don't know, at least 70 years old. Um, you can see his mustache. It is very J. Jonah Jameson of him. And then he has, how would I describe this? The like, I was it? once in the military, but now I am a principal or a teacher at a school. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Or that I have my wife cut my hair. Yeah, that too. That yeah. too. <laughs> And she makes him peanut butter sandwiches with the crust cut off. Well, right. Uh, oh, In a God, it's, just... <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Do you guys remember how excited we were? Like, oh my gosh, Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans. And this movie's going to be amazing. And, uh, and then this, this, is, what, this is, is what, this what they got. give us. Now, uh, <laughs> what is the uh, gray man? I thought it was going to be like a scary movie, but it looks more like an action flick. (laughs) I thought, yeah, I thought so too. But yeah, it looks like a bizarre action flick. So it's coming out on Netflix later this year and Netflix just did their, they didn't put out like a whole trailer for it. It's like a three minute trailer for what's coming to Netflix. And so these were the, the first little clips. So I don't know, maybe it's, 20 seconds that you get so you can't really tell what the movie is but the majority of the 20 seconds i will say is not chris evans like i just kept watching it and watching it and i'm like are we gonna get chris evans when am i gonna see chris evans it was right and then right at the end you get chris evans (laughs) with with a mustache and i'm like oh my god this is what this is what we're getting i swear he just at this point is like Give me roles where I ha- I have to look creepy and grow a mustache just to I mean, like, screw with people. Maybe they'll shave it off at some point in the movie. That's like a pivotal scene of them we shaving it off. can only help. I mean, we they did that only... in, um, what, what was that, Endgame? Or, yeah, when in Endgame yeah, when he shaved yeah. his beard off, which I was very upset about. Like, right yeah, at that the beginning. That was upsetting. Yeah. No, it that was a good beard. moment for me. Even, like, you know. <laughs> My husband was like, oh, I'm so happy for you. Look. <laughs> uh, by the way, my husband, producer Patches, is not with us today because about 20 minutes before the podcast, he started making the cat's chicken. And I kind mm-hmm. of like took it as this like passive aggressive, like, how dare you plan the podcast on a Sunday when we're supposed to be like laying around together. And so I was like, all right, I'm going upstairs to podcast. And and he went, shit, I forgot we're doing that. Now I'm making chicken. So yeah. I assumed that he was watching his darts. That was, Tia, that was this morning because oh. we're, you know, the darts are going on in England. So, you know, I can't, I couldn't get him out of bed for like anything. Like he's late to everything. He does not like to get out of bed. <laughs> but if there's darts on at 7 a.m., he is up and at them and ready to go. So, yes. So, darts were earlier. And then, so let's go around and uh, do some binges and books and see what everybody's got going on. We got the binges and books, 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 binges and books. Let's go to Katie. Oh, okay. binges. So, what was it? Last week? I made Eric and I go to Flick's brew house to watch Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets because they were playing it some random they night. Were? They were. They've been doing it like the last couple of weeks. It's just wow. random nights that you can go see Harry Potter. And we did. And we've been watching all the movies since. Oh, very nice. See, that is our, we always do that at Christmas. I don't know why everyone, I guess because there's, there is so much Christmas in Harry Potter, but it's like such a thing for Harry Potter fans to rewatch at Christmas. So I'm coming off of my Harry Potter rewatch. Is Was there anything about watching it in the theater again that gave you new insight or reignited your love? I wouldn't say insight because I've seen it like a hundred times, but mm-hmm. I enthusiasm because it's different watching it at home where you can pause it whenever you want versus watching it like with an audience in a theater and these are obviously people who already like this movie because it's Mm -hmm. a random night on a tuesday or something very nice thank you katie all 
All right, producer Jana, what's your been? Well, the second season of Sweet Magnolias came out on Friday, and so I sat around all day and watched all ten episodes because of who I am as a person, and mm-hmm. I just had to know from all the cliffhangers that I had in season one, and like it's been like I don't even know when that show came out, like damn near two years ago. And I was like, when are we going to get it? And I kind of like forgot what had happened. And I was like, what's going on? But I watched all 10 episodes and OMG had me really? shook at the end. Okay, let me tell you. I don't want to spoil it because like I feel like some people might actually like be out there watching it. But like yeah. in season one, there's a character. His name's Isaac. And he comes to their town because he's looking for his birth parents. And in season two, you find out who his birth parents are, and it is a scandal. Okay. Oh. It is like for real tea. Okay. Really? Uh, like you did yes. you did not see this coming? Uh, not at all. Literally, I was like, okay, maybe it's this person, but maybe it's this person. It was literally two people I never expected it to be. Now, Jada, is that there any any tie-ins is it to the movie? Or did they just kind of is this totally different from anything that it's You're totally thinking of different. Okay. Steel, steel Magnolias. Magnolias. You're Which right, I am. I'm like, movie. why is there a show about Steel Magnolias? <laughs> no, I should, I should Magnolias. let you guys know I drank last <laughs> night and I have a really bad headache today. <laughs> oh, shit, KJ. Okay, KJ, get it. <laughs> it's called Sweet Magnolias. It's on oh, Netflix. It's you. currently okay. at number one. On okay. Netflix, and it's only been two days. Oh, okay. So I recommend everyone go watch it. It's great. Thank you. Thank you, Jada. Yeah. yeah. And for those of you who are watching it, you may have noticed that I have been squinting. That's <laughs> because I do have <laughs> a really, really wonderful headache going on. Tia, you got a binge or a book? So I watched Amazon Prime just released the Reacher series. Oh, yeah. So I watched that. It stars Alan Richson, who plays Hawk on DC Titans. And I thought it was good. I wouldn't say it was great. I think that it has the like first season hiccups. And I think like, and I think if they get a second season, it'll improve. So I have like a lot of high hopes for it. It's funny because like they did a adaptation in like 2012 of, of the Jack Reacher book series. And they had like, uh tom cruise as like the main character and i remember how pissed my dad was because like the book loves saying he's six foot five he's jacked he's this he's that and we all know that tom cruise (laughs) is not that (laughs) so so it feels like in this show they really were trying to retcon that because literally every episode like no episode could go without five references of how absolutely massive like alan richson is they were like oh this big guy oh look how big he is blah blah blah. and it's like at some point i'm like i get it i get it guys but it's good i i wouldn't say that again it's great but it's the same thing like amazon prime did jack ryan and Mm -hmm. i really and like season one was good but season two was great so i'm just hoping to be the same thing okay I yeah. saw, I don't know what we were doing on Amazon Prime, but I saw, I've got to take Groot off my shoulder. He's like pulling on my, pulling Twitter. on my bra. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Groot is pulling on my bra. That's yeah, the name of this key. episode. I saw an ad for it. I don't remember what we were doing on Prime, but I was like, oh, Reacher. I, I, I bet mean, Tia's watching that. I think it's good. It's it's a like murder mystery, essentially, you know, so it kind of very much plays out like a sorry that my dog just yeah. decided to randomly attack my cat. Thank you, lady. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you, my calming remedies work for dogs, too, if you need them. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the reacher series at storms and melodies.com get your calming remedies today <laughs> whoop, whoop. Okay. you know what J- reacher reminds me of like the flow is very much like criminal minds like this very like kind of low-key like crime investigating sort of show so i i listen i definitely suggest checking it out I think it's good. Alan Richson is in it. Malcolm Goodwin from iZombie was in it. So I always love supporting iZombie alums. So yeah, definitely check it out. It's on Prime right now. Okay, Jada, I do want to talk about binges and books. Let's see. I I want to talk about Peacemaker. I don't, I'm not caught up on it yet, but I think we're like four or five episodes in. But first, I know I don't have any fellow Star Wars people really here watching the book of Boba Fett. 
But you don't even need to be watching the Book of Boba Fett because they've just literally for a second week interrupted the Book of Boba Fett to not only bring you the Mandalorian, but to also bring you like shocking, unbelievable things that you never thought you would see in Star Wars that have you like screaming at the TV. I can't believe I'm seeing this right now. Is it Anakin? (laughs) Is it Anakin? It was pretty much everything but Anakin. Uh, and it had like your mind, like my mind was trying to tie things in because there were characters coming in and you're like, wait, how did they fit into this? And how much older is she than him? Because I didn't ever think that they would be together. It was like, I don't understand what's happening. I don't know where Boba Fett is, but why did they drop this like mind blowing, like Star Wars canon stuff right in the middle of it that has Nothing to do with Boba Fett. Even if they get everybody back together, because like the last time we saw Boba Fett, he was like gathering up his forces because he's going to stand his ground. We're getting ready for a big fight, right? And then the next episode is like the, the, the Mandalorian theme and the Mandalorian walks in and you just keep watching it and you're like, well, this is a Mandalorian episode. I don't know what Boba Fett's doing. But the way they ended it, I thought, okay, that like moves the Mandalorian along and he's probably going to show up for the big fight now and we can go back to Boba Fett. And this week they were like, we're not going back to Boba Fett. We are just going to like do some crazy, crazy shit that if you're not watching Boba Fett, you're not a Star Wars fan and you just missed out on all the stuff you've been waiting for or never thought you were ever going to see your entire life. So I don't know if they're going back to Boba Fett. Like it was so crazy that because on we were watching, it comes out on Wednesday nights and we were like laying there kind of like, let's put it on and watch Boba Fett. And then both of us were standing up the entire time and pacing and screaming, what is happening? What is happening? And then Patches ran upstairs when it was over. It was like, Geek Vibes is still live. I've got to get up there and talk about this. <laughs> like, like, ran up the stairs and jumped on the, the live podcast, which, by the way, if you're watching the book of Boba Fett, you should go to Geek Vibes podcast on Wednesday night and follow along. But all of the guys on the podcast had already been talking about it for an hour. So they were like, yeah, we, yeah, we're, we're done <laughs> freaking out. Like he was having this freak out that they were already passed. I almost feel as if like they've given up on Boba and they're just like, let's just concentrate on everyone else. (laughs) I just, my question is like when they were storyboarding this thing, how was this part of the plan? Like it's really, what they're doing is really, really cool. And the episode with the Mandalorian was great. It continues their stuff with the Mandalorian and this one that just like, like said i don't want to spoil anything because it was kind of one of those like every star wars fan should be watching this and having the like i can't believe this is happening moment that we're having but it was just the whole time it's happening you're also a little bit just confused because you're like what is this this is all really cool i can't believe i'm seeing this what does this have to do with boba fett like what what why is this happening? I just don't understand and like creating the arc of the Boba Fett series. And maybe it's going to make some sense. But I feel like this Wednesday, it's just going to be like, and now back to Boba Fett. Like, I don't get how any of this is going to, because they kind of, what you got this week, they did kind of wrap up as if like, okay, next week we're going back to Boba Fett. But it's like, what the hell has this been doing in the middle of Boba Fett? So it's well, you just, don't know, I don't know. it's going to tie in in the next episode, KJ. That's why they did it. <laughs> we don't. Confused. But I've never, I've never seen a show that is specifically made about a character that has spent so much of its time not even having that character in the episode. That's all I'm saying. I mean, like, he's not in the episodes. <laughs> Yeah, they just wanted to give Pedro Pascal some more money. (laughs) Yeah, I would. Yeah. (laughs) I would argue maybe they were like halfway through it. They're like, you know what? Mandalorian was better. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. (laughs) Well, and there are like, there are people that are like, you know, the book of Boba Fett was not really being received well. So screw it. Let's throw this stuff that we have in the can for the Mandalorian in and we'll just throw them all off. You know, Mandalorian season, whatever. Just, just. 
just put that in there. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, super bizarre. But I loved it. And if you are a Star Wars fan at all, like from the like old stuff, if you watch The Mandalorian, all there's just like all this stuff that is really, really cool that happens in this episode that was not expected whatsoever. And very well done, by the way. You won't be disappointed. So at least go watch those two episodes of Boba Fett. Uh, and we'll, we're going to, Tia, did you... Are, am I crazy? Or are you caught up with Peacemaker? Were you watching it too? I have not watched this week's new episode. My playing of Red Dead Redemption 2 is really taking over everything. But I definitely want to catch up with it because I, I love the show. Like I was excited on Thursday when I was at work and I was like, ooh, new, new episode today. So I definitely have to catch up with it. I've seen the clip of John Cena well, like Peacemaker playing a piano version of Home Sweet Home by Motley Crue. And I was like, already, I just know that this episode is going to be great. So maybe oh, even God. after, maybe even after this podcast, I'm going to check it out. No promises, though, because I may just go back to playing Red Dead. <laughs> there is, and we'll get you and Katie chatting about that in the gaming update next. But I don't know, you know, Jada, even for you or... Tia, if this is having any sort of emotional impact on you, but this music, no. the soundtrack of, of Peacemaker is like my, this is my teenage year. <laughs> when he puts the Firehouse record on, I like lost my mind. Don't Treat Me Bad was like a freaking like anthem of my life. And it wasn't a super popular song. There's like all these things that are happening that I'm like, oh my God, James Gunn is just like, this whole thing is just going to take that little, that little sector that lived their lives through the hair bands. And we're just going to freaking bring back all of these memories and play all of these songs. Because even, you know, even producer Patches, who's pretty up on on hair bands because he had to be when he met me i was like oh, we're gonna go to the slaughter winger warrant concert so you better get up on it boy and yeah. um yeah and even he's like who's this? I'm like, oh, james god is going deep into the hair bands for this like i'm gonna need the peacemaker well, you know what's so funny? When I started watching it and I was hearing all the music, I was like, oh, KJ, I'll love this. <laughs> like, immediately, as soon as I heard the music, I was like, KJ, 100%. This is her. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of similar to Cobra Kai, where I'm like, am I loving Cobra Kai because of the storyline? Or is it just like giving me so many feels because I love this freaking music? Like when the kid was like, it had his ringtone rat. I'm like, oh my God. This is no, amazing. I love that the Peacemaker series has like brought in hair metal back yes. just because like, like, listen, I'm 31. So I wasn't even born in the 80s. But mm -hmm. I like grew up with my dad listening to music. My cousins like parents loved hair metal. So even though like, I would say I'm more into grunge or new metal. My mm -hmm. first like CD I ever bought was like Appetite for Destruction by Guns N' Roses. So nice. it's like, <laughs> nice. so, so like all of the shit I was like, and that's why I love James Gunn. He just brings back like rock and I'm like, I appreciate you. I appreciate like, mm -hmm. again, love Motley Crue. So the fact that John Cena is sitting there playing the piano version, I was like, love this, love this. Yes. <laughs> It is. And he, I mean, he really does it. There are, you know, there have been other filmmakers, obviously music has been a big part of, of filmmaking forever, but it's like the way he's very, very thoughtful. And it's not just like, it's not self-serving. Like it really, the music he's picking is it's, it's fueling the moment. It totally makes sense, but it's just done. I mean, from the second that we, I, I'm going back to the, first time i saw the trailer for guardians of the galaxy and it was like the you know the music that was in it and i was like oh my gosh like he knows how to connect right he knows how to take that music and be like i'm just gonna love this so much and seeing john cena like dance around in his underwear to hair bands is i mean how could i not love this i don't care how <laughs> freaking this this show is weird as shit, man. But like yeah, I told you. the mute the music is is on point. <laughs>
Uh, all right. Well, let's get into because uh, Katie, before you even got here, Tia was talking about how distracted she's been by her gaming recently. So let's turn it over to the gamer girls. It's time for a gaming update boop, 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 with gamer Katie. So tell us, Tia, where are you in the game? <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2, right? Yes, I started with two because for some reason on the Play Store, the second one was $30 cheaper than the first one. So it's like, okay. it took 14 hours to download. I'm on chapter three, on chapter three right now. Arthur just helped some women during the women's suffrage. So, you know, woohoo. I'm like loving it because I love GTA and it's by the same like, you yep. know, studio that did GTA. So, but there's so much more. And like Katie played it, so she could definitely attest to this. There's like so much to do. Like there's so much to do. I just live in this little world and it's amazing. I mean, that's what Rockstar is really good at is building very, what's the word? Realistic worlds. Like you walk around town and you can like talk to people and see things happening and go on all these little side quests and you could completely ignore the main part of the game if you wanted to. But yeah. Yeah. There's some like I... I've obviously been playing the story, but just alone, like making sure that you're fed, encountering the random strangers on your journey from town to town. It's just, there's so much. And like with GTA, I was, especially the first time playing, I was very concentrated on like at least completing the story first and then going back and having fun. In this, it's like, obviously I want the story, but I'm just, I'm alone for the ride. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm glad you're loving it. It's such a good game. I, so, so it's so good. Katie, <laughs> because you obviously played them in the order that they came out, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is a prequel, right? So this will make total sense for Tia going back and playing the first one after the second one. Right? Yes. So it doesn't spoil it because the game's been out for like 15 years. Um, in the second one, which is the first one, so the original Red Dead Redemption... Mm -hmm. You play as John, who right. is your buddy in Red Dead Redemption 2. Mm -hmm. No, I so I know that and I've encountered John quite a bit in 2. I already know, like, and this isn't a spoiler because Red Dead Redemption 2 has been out for four years. But it's like, I already know that Arthur dies. I'm <gasps> kind of sad. <laughs> no, like, it's uh, really sad. <laughs> well i haven't gotten to the him dying yet i've just i know that he dies and i'm like but i want you to stay alive <laughs> you you rugged cowboy man <laughs> so no, if you Katie. pay close attention playing mm -hmm. the whole game you can tell how he dies before you get there oh Ooh, you gotta pay attention to you <sighs> i know it's so but much. you gotta pay really close attention okay so let me ask you, Katie, when you were playing it for the first time, did you know you didn't know he was going to die? No, I went into it blind. And I, I kind of like playing games that way. Like you you don't have any expectations and you, you know, you're not like looking for things and you're not looking for hints and clues. You're just enjoying the game. And then you like hit the hindsight is 2020 moment after the fact. And you're like, oh, I missed all these things and whatever. And it just kind of adds a little layer of depth that I feel like you don't get if you're looking for it. Well, and I'll say that I went into it originally completely blind, but then my boyfriend is also playing Red Dead 2. We just have two different saved games and we're like sitting down and he's like, I think Arthur dies. And I was like, what do you mean you think Arthur dies? He's like, I Hello saw this you thing. Too, <laughs> <laughs> so I was um, like, well, at that point, I'm just going to look it up then. <laughs> well, he oh. is correct. Don't spoil it for how he dies for yourself. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. But what he said that I was like, all right. <laughs> well, he has to die for it to make sense because he wasn't in the first game at all. Right. And well, it's the whole rest of the gang. So it yeah, would be but couldn't he just ride off into the there. sunset? Happily no, they're ever criminals, after. KJ. You don't get a happily ever after. That's the point. Oh, That's okay. the whole point of the first game. <laughs> they're criminals. <laughs> That's the whole point of the first game is like, he has to like rat out the members of his gang to save his family to the law. Like the Pinkerton detective agencies coming after him because they're criminals. Like they rob trains and they kill people and whatever. And he says like early part of the game that like they're 
their lifestyle is dying out. Like people are moving to cities and it's the, you know, the era of the cowboy is dying and things like that. Like that's the whole point is like the world is moving on without them. Yeah. I mean, they keep, even in Red Dead 2, which obviously takes place, I think 12 years prior to the first one, even in that one, they keep talking about like, are we um, going extinct pretty much? I do have a question for Katie since she's the gaming expert. And we're talking Ooh, about yeah. at this time we are accepting gaming questions. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so how do you feel that Rockstar finally confirmed that GTA six is in the works? Well, they've released GTA five, like five separate times. So I think it's about time. <laughs> how do they release it five times? Well, they released it for the PlayStation and the 360. Then mm-hmm. they released it for the PS4 and the Xbox one. Then it was for PC. And then they just kind of keep updating it to bring it to the next generation of consoles. Like you can still play that bad boy. It's on huh. five. Like it's on yeah. the PS five and it's like, yeah, it just, and that game going. came out five, six, seven years ago. So they're really milking nearly this 10 years ago. Yeah. 2013. Rockstar did to GTA five. <laughs> what Bethesda has done to Skyrim. They just put it on every console. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Katie, do you have any uh, any gaming news of your own? Him, him. <clears throat> wow, she has notes. <laughs> I know. Wow, yes. I'm the only one of us that's actually prepared. Pokemon Legends Arceus is out to mixed reviews. Uh-huh. Uh, however, it has sold 6.5 million copies, so I don't think they're that mixed of reviews. Um, By the way, I'll have you know that just moments before this podcast, I Googled Chris Evans for the Chris Evans update, so I was prepared. Okay. okay. But look, I have it written down. <laughs> Are you writing? Are you writing on your uh, Conquest Journal's official, officially licensed Harry Potter notebook? No, because I don't want to ruin it. Oh, you're so nice. <laughs> yeah. So that game came out. Mixed reviews. Basically, it takes place in Gen Four of the Pokemon universe, but like in the past. So you run around and like you're the one hiding in the tall grass now, and you can like sneak up on Pokemon and like have little battles. And the joke, the running joke right now, seems to be just how much damage hyper beam does so like let's say you have your opponent's pokemon and your pokemon whatever and if you have any like understanding of how pokemon games work like there's a size difference in them whatever best example is there's a snorlax and it's like the tiny trainers pokemon and whatever the snorlax uses hyper beam it just takes up the entire screen (laughs) just (laughs) overloadingly destroyed this little tiny pokemon but it is very funny the- Jonna's mom just hopped on screen and I don't know what's going on, but Jonna's John- also Life is the Strange Remastered look- Collection came out too. Oh, hang on. Yeah. We're- Go ahead. Sorry, you guys talked over each other. My Tia, bad. were you no 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 Wait, are you kidding? That's that's what we do on this show. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know. I'm still so new. I was just gonna say the Pokemon Arceus uh graphics look really cool though. See, I was gonna say they look like trash, but that's not <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> so I'm in the middle of a Breath of the Wild replay right now because Breath of the Wild 2 is supposed to come out at some point this year. And that was, you know, major studio, Nintendo, lots of people working on it. Best example, you climb to the top of the mountain and you could literally see everything around you. Absolutely beautiful. Pokemon Legends Arceus looks like an empty field when you do the same thing. Well, to be fair, I haven't played it. I just. So it, looks, it looks great like Wait, on the this ground this is the moment that tia never comes back <laughs> yeah no i know like katie's mean I no am. no katie's the expert i'm not a gamer i say it all the time i'm not a gamer i, I just like I mean, every though. once in, i just every once in a while play a game like katie's a gamer she knows <laughs> <laughs> if katie says it's trash it's trash <laughs> well yes but like on the ground it looks great the pokemon look cute the animations and like the little world look cute so far it's just like that long distance which may be a setting you might be able to fix i don't know i haven't played it um but like the side-by-side comparison of breath of the wild and legends arceus looks like trash <laughs> Maybe you need to just take a look, Tia. Do the side yeah. by side. Then you'll be like, oh, yeah, Katie's I right. I see what she was cool. saying. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know. I can't believe that I saved this for last because it's probably been the thing I've been most excited about all, all, all week long. There were rumors about this in the supernatural world. There was a tweet that made things super. It was like the first time 
that Jared and Jensen weren't on the same page in our entire lives and the tweets were making it very uncomfortable. And it was like, are the boys breaking up? Like, are like, is this the end of their friendship? But it was confirmed and apparently they're back okay now. Jensen Ackles will be a part of producing a new show for Supernatural, which has been given the green light for a pilot called The Winchesters, which will follow. And Jensen is supposed to be um, narrating it. Yeah. So he's got, it'll be this, the love story of John and Mary that we never got. And it will be told and narrated by Dean. <laughs> How, does okay? How does he know? How does he know? What, Was he not, not there? You know what I'm wondering, Katie? I'm that's wondering a good point. if and his dad I'm is not super touchy feely in the three seasons that I watched before he died. <laughs> so I guarantee you he did not sit his kids down and be like, listen here, children, this is the story of how I met and fell in love with your mother. Not gonna do that. Well, he wasn't around enough, so he probably didn't. <laughs> yeah. So how does he know the story of how his parents met if they're both negligent oh, and or dead? Hey, they're all in heaven now. They no, have have heaven. Heaven. Everybody died. So I'm having flashbacks to how I met your mother. Exactly. It's going to be little Dean sitting on a couch. (laughs) I mean, to be fair, John is not, as Kay said, John's not a very like forthcoming father. I mean, they didn't even know they had a brother until like season five. Oh, yeah. And they didn't do anything with that that at all. They just let him (laughs) walk off into the fucking sunset. (laughs) Not that I'm bitter. Okay. Here is my theory. This is what I think. We're go- how this is going to make sense, Katie. And I can't promise, but because I was thinking <laughs> about this too. I'm like, you know, and one, like, I don't even, you know, I don't want the details of my parents' uh, love story necessarily. But I think that this is, uh, these are going to be the pages of the John Winchester journal that like we didn't get like he's gonna find a new journal that's like talking about what is this, meeting diary Mary. yes because no, he like did the journal is about fighting monsters right right like, oh, like no I, note, I fell in love with your mom on this date she was wearing a pretty dress it was really cute <laughs> no, i think it's gonna be like a different a different journal that he came volume across. two how i fell in love with your mother i don't think and it's the, and necessarily then, gonna be like lovey i think it's gonna be him like the entries that he writes and how different life is like hunting with Mary. So I, it makes he journaled. They didn't, hunt. They didn't hunt. I thought he gave that up because of her. Yeah, Excuse but then me. but then she was a yes, hunter no, and came from hunt, like a hunting family. They didn't hunt family. together, right? Excuse, thank you. Excuse me. Excuse yes, me. Pardon ahead, me. Thank you. I will say, you said hunting together. They never hunted together. John started right. hunting. Because Mary was murdered by Azazel or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's, that's the whole on the fire ceiling thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So and then, then he's like, is he going to have a chapter about talking about the girl that he had an affair with? Definitely one. Right. <laughs> I really hope so. Yes, who's going <laughs> to avoid that? Because I need to know the tea, now. okay? <laughs> This is going to be the supernatural telenovela. <laughs> yes, that's what we want. Just go balls to the wall, make it a telenovela. The supernatural oh, is already it. dramatic. Make the Winchesters even more dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> let it die. Jeez. Yeah. Beating the dead horse. Just let this die. Like you already I mean, had I thought, like 20 you know, seasons, right? And I thought that was the whole point but, of going into different like projects. Jensen Ackles is in The Boys. Jared Padalecki is like doing walker apparently they pre-approved a prequel <laughs> series for that like what for walker? yes Why? there's a oh spin-off series because cw literally doesn't know what to do they lost arrow and they're losing yeah. all these others and they're like we don't know what else to do Let's well and i think that's why this is happening this is that that's what they're doing they're like well how have we made money we've made y'all money had 15 of seasons and didn't have enough time to tell this story already i know well but it wasn't ever told. Like, this was about the boys, you know, after. Yeah, so and why, like, okay, let's say I'm a Supernatural fan. Mm-hmm. Why do I care? Like, it doesn't add to the story that's already over. Well, I care because it means that my husband's company gets to keep making Supernatural stuff and making money. 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, boy. She needs to have a roof over her head because of uh, Supernatural. <laughs> We're going to have another John Winchester journal. It's going to be his uh, his love life with okay. Mary. Yeah. Are we going to call it his journal or his diary? It's because his I feel diary. like journals and diaries are two different things. If it's about falling in love with his mom, that's a diary. It's a, it's a diary. I don't know. I yeah. just, I mean, all of my stuff that Dear I write diary. is all... Today, do you have, I fell okay. in love. Do you have a, a, a separate diary and a journal? No, I don't even have a journal. I don't have either. I only I journal. Journals. I'm not great no. at it. You have your life together? At- yeah. I have a plan, oh, no, but that's because I'm an adult. I don't, want, I don't want to remember anything, so <laughs> none of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dear but diary, is, guess who figured out nice how to avoid to child support? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like to go back sometimes and I'll be like, oh, look at uh, my life was a way bigger shit show then. I feel so much better right now. <laughs> well, I feel like that. Like my grandpa has had a journal for the past 30 years, but it legit is like events. It, like, it, it's not like Dear Diary. Today, my daughter made a 70 on her math test. It's like Louise made a 70 on her math test. And it's like, I no longer it. have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I say it because that's literally an entry. Like, I don't know what year it was, but it was like my mom. It was like, Louise made a 70 on her math. And it's like, oh, okay. And then it's like, you know, so it's like a series of events. I think I had a diary when I was a kid. And I don't want to look at it because it's probably like super emo and like just oh my God, cringe. It's so great. It's so great. My younger sister, like she scrapbooked and wrote me letters because mm. we lived apart. And she like literally created a scrapbook and gave it to me one day when I was visiting her when she was like seven. And she was like, there's pages in here that are done and there will be things that I'm sending to you that you need to put in here. And I, it was, it's the most adorable thing, but she's 31 now. And I love to get it out because it is like this emo freaking little diary and like weird poems that she wrote. And for some reason she would always sign off. Like she would say, I love you. You're a dude. (laughs) I'm like, why were you always telling me I was a dude? Like, she's like, I don't know. I don't remember. But it's like all these weird things. She hates that I kept it. But I'm like, you told me. You told me I had to keep this. I mean, scrapbooks are fine. Like my mom scrapbooks and everything. And like it's super my mom's always like, you know, when I die, you inherit all the scrapbooks. And it's like, I'm an only child, so who else would get them? <laughs> and what do you do with them? Show my grandkids, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> But I would say that I I don't think any, I mean, I there's no like diary in my life, but I do journal and like write about my thoughts for the day. And sometimes like, but if John Winchester, if Dean is going to retell the story of John Winchester and Mary Winchester, it has to be because he found something that his dad wrote. Oh, that's or be maybe like two episodes because those two are not <laughs> emotional. <laughs> Maybe Ellen y'all Mary Winchester's journal. Maybe he finds his mom's journal. Okay, look, I just wanna just wanna throw it out there like a smidge. Everybody is currently deceased. So how is it <laughs> that he is finding these journals? Yeah, didn't he Where die because he of like a nail to the back or something? <laughs> Did he find them while Supernatural was like airing and they were like doing something? Like, where is he finding these? I've I i I'm having a lot maybe of questions. He had, yeah. Maybe he, he, he had mo- he had moments before he died. Like that's yeah. what they didn't show you in the finale. <laughs> the series. Oh, right, they showed the finale like, in the finale, okay. Right, because the whole finale was like, oh shit, we only got one episode left. <laughs> all the things we should have done all season, all in one episode. I have another thought, you guys. Okay. One more thought on this. If it's not a journal, because Dean is is dead right so like now there's no concept of time does dean as like dean on the other side get to go back and watch what happened like maybe he chooses to go back in time and watch the story of how his mom and dad met and he's up in heaven on a little cloud and he's watching the story of his mom and dad's I, so I feel like I, it would make more sense if jeffrey dean morgan was narrating it but that's just my personal opinion 
Also, like, I didn't watch the last, like, five seasons, but, like, John was never good to Dean. It's like, I don't know why Dean continuously puts John up on a pedestal. Like, why would you want to go back and see that? John was terrible to you. Yeah, John was a bad dad. No doubt. He was. So we're going to find out how he became a bad dad. Yeah, it's a whole (laughs) show based on, like, a bad bad dad. dad. We already (laughs) know why he is one. So why do we need a whole show talking about it? Because Dean needs therapy. This is this is Dean working out his dead. daddy. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Whatever. He's done. I don't know. I think it's silly. KJ, I'm happy that you're happy. I'm just but, ragging on you. <laughs> no, I don't care. No. Does this make sense? No. no. Is it more of the Look. Winchesters? Yes. Like, that's all that matters. I'm very excited. I just have more questions is what I'm saying. That's all it is. Yeah, but that's the whole point of this, Jada, is that we don't understand it. So we're going to tune in because it's like, well, this doesn't make sense. Like, how is this going to happen? And how are they going to do that? And so we're going to watch, which is what they want us to do. Yeah, give us more of your money. We don't want to come up with a new show. Rumor has it that, like, they're trying to sell off the CW because it's in such bad shape. So to me, this is like the last Everything's gone. Supernatural's gone. Like Tia said, Arrow's gone. Like, I mean, the Flash and, you know. The uh, CW, I think this is the the, like, the CW's problem is that they rely too much on their, like, comic book you know titles because forever right you had like six different comic book uh, shows all centered around the flash that were doing really well you had supernatural that was doing really well because every time i saw them try and do an original like i was a big fan of i zombie right and every season and every season it was like you were sitting there going like is it going to be renewed they would give early renewals to all the freaking dc shows supernatural but anything else, like I saw, you're like waiting for the last second. Like, is it going to get renewed? So it's like CW put too much of their eggs in one basket. And now that like those shows are ending, CW is like, we don't know what to do now. I agree. Right. And it's like, where was the vision? Like, what mm-hmm. were Hire some planning? writers. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's it's interesting because their shows have done and part of their problem is that their shows have done so much better. Even Supernatural did better as a streaming show than it did as a network show. They've never had a show that's really killed it. They've had shows that do well for the CW, well, but they would never let they would never last anywhere else. And so how long can you keep that model going? And their budgets are also terrible. Cord, maybe yeah. the CW needs to stick to streaming. Like maybe they need to remodel their entire company and in the sense, take streaming in both hands and only do that. If it's not going to do well well, on air. If they do like, like streaming, I need them to be better about it. That's all I'm saying. I hate. And that's part of the problem too, John, is that their app sucks. Yes. I freaking hate the CW On top of the fact that there's 30,000 streaming apps, but. Right. But I mean, well, like, the CW, why would you go to the CW? for no reason? What why would you CW go to the crappy no CW app yeah. when you can just go to Netflix? Like, right. Yeah. You're, or you, you can literally to- watch, you know, Nancy Drew or whatever else on literally any other streaming service besides but all those solutions CW. cost money. Mm-hmm. That you're is right. Why. If they put more money into their streaming app, maybe they would be doing a little bit better. I well, think people have gotten really tired of like, the storylines not making sense in these cw shows and their graphics like it's to the point where like the sci-fi channel which is notoriously known for like bad cgi has better cgi than some of the shit that i've seen on like supergirl sci-fi right but yeah but i feel like that's kind of when when you go to sci-fi you're like oh this is gonna be super cheesy i love it like give me cw you expect like if i'm gonna be watching these characters that are like you know, have a rich history in comics. And, you know, I know, like, I expect something a little bit better. And they've, they've never been able to maintain that. So back to the Winchesters. <laughs> That's where we're going. <laughs> Can you imagine a supernatural, like, show, like the Winchesters, or even if they continue to supernatural, on a network that actually would allow them to be as gory as, like, say, that show should have been? Because that's another thing. Yeah. CW is incredibly like kid friendly, and they've had to really tone things down for every show. And it's like, can you imagine like, that? 
insane that they're so kid friendly because like what kid is sitting around watching Supernatural and Riverdale and Nancy Drew like I'm a grown person and some of that shit scares me like <laughs> yeah no seriously like well, who, but there, who, was, there, there, not... there were a right. lot of people that I mean they if you watch the first season of Supernatural it was there was blood and gore and it was it dark. Yeah, that Wendigo is a little scary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that was kind of. I mean, there were a lot of people that were like, "What happened to this show?" And that's what happened was that it was like, "No, we're gonna you, you keep doing this, but don't uh, you know do it in a light way." And I have friends who are I have friends right now who are binging Supernatural with their kids. Like it doesn't no scare sense. them at all. <laughs> So yeah, well, if it I mean, could have been done pretty right. Pretty desensitized from stuff like that, though. Too. We're not going to solve the CW's problems today, and I don't. <laughs> they care don't pay us for that. <laughs> I, it wasn't my idea to bring the Winchesters back. I'm just here to tell you that there's more supernatural uh, stories. CW, to be told. give me money. I'll, I'll fix your CW. problem. Yeah. <laughs> 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 problem, CW. Give me some money. <laughs> All right, guys. I know Thank what the people so want. Thank you so much for listening. Aww. Katie's showing us her puppy dog in the sunshine. Hi, Murphy. Murphy's uh, just chilling. like Jada's packing up. She's like, screw this show. I'm out of here. Um, excuse me, my computer's dying. Also, we never uh, got to what's got Jonna weeping, but that's fine. Oh my gosh, we did it. Do you want to do? Do you want to do what's got Jonna weeping really quick? I mean, do I have to have another 15 seconds like I did last week? Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh! Listen, Jada's got. Oh, she's getting angry. All right, let it. And I'm let's sorry, see, I haven't like, eaten anything today. Oh my gosh, uh, she's hangry and she hasn't been able to talk about what's got her weeping. Uh, I've had a stomach, uh, and I've been doing exactly what KJ said. I've been posting about it in the Kinda Nerdy Network and on Twitter. You've been doing very oh, good. Yeah, yeah like Katie. It. Katie, where's your gaming update? Uh, uh, you're breaking up. Yeah. <laughs> Once a week. Once a week. Damn it, Katie. All right. Woo. Before we go, let's hear what's got Jada weeping. Thank you, Jada. And I am. I'm very proud of you. You've been you've been tweeting. You've been active in the kind of nerdy network. It's just really, season two is blowing up, and it's all because of you. It's definitely not because of we're Katie. growing. The character <laughs> growth this season is great. All right, what's got you weeping? Okay, so the season finale of And Just Like That, the Sex in the City spinoff, was Thursday. And since, you know, Snowmageddon was happening here in the good old Midwest, I was sitting at home and I was on HBO Max and I was like, oh my God, the new episode's out, which I didn't know was the season finale either. And I was watching it and I would like to say that that was probably my favorite episode. Like, it was really good. It's literally what the entire series, I can't think of who it was in the kind of nerdy network, but she was like, what this episode was is what the series should have been. Okay. Now, Tia, because you were not thrilled with what was going on with this, did you even finish it? Have you seen the finale? They're not getting my viewership at all, but my mom said that she actually really liked the season finale. She was like, she said the same thing that you say, John, that someone in the network said, like, if they had just done that, it would have been a stronger season. Jana, did it make up for, because they did some real damage to the, the characters and the relationships. How did the finale make that better? I mean, I think that they, like, made, made the relationships between the characters feel stronger. You know, like with, I mean, even with Carrie and Samantha, because, you know, Samantha's not even, you know, on the show anymore. Kim Cattrall, she's not on the show anymore. Right. So, like, I mean, there's this scene, and I'll just tell y'all, because, I mean, it's been out since what? Thursday, so if you haven't watched it yet, then. And I, well, and I hope has, and he has and not going to watch it, so. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. And, like, this is going to sound mean, but, like, I hope and I pray that HBO does not renew them for a second season, because I think where they left off, season one like where they stopped it at was absolutely perfect to end sex like to end sex in the city like in general so like i hope that they don't do a season two because it would it would just make the show it would just make it worse i feel like but at the the season finale charlotte's daughter who is self-identifying you know as she doesn't want to be a boy or a girl or anything like that she's supposed to have a bar mitzvah 
She doesn't get bar mitzvahed, which is like a really big deal, you know, to people mm-hmm. in the Jewish community. That's very. Yeah. And then Miranda and Steve, you know, obviously they get divorced. And the person that Miranda is with is going to California to work on a TV show pilot. And they want Miranda to come with them. And so Miranda's going to leave New York and go with Che to Los Angeles for like three or four months. And then Carrie, as we all know, uh, was married to Big. And we all know Big died, see, like episode one, which was I did not awesome. know that. No. <laughs> Big died episode one. It's terrible. I sobbed. But she, this entire, the entire season goes like a year. She holds on to his ashes because she doesn't know where to spread them at. And then in the end, she ends up, if anybody has ever watched Sex in the City, you know that super iconic scene where Carrie and Big finally get together in Paris, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. You know, thanks to you. I, wa- I was a fan. I was a fan. <laughs> you were yes. a fan until this series. Listen, right? and I yeah. don't mean to I don't mean to cut off Jonna, but it's like I loved the whole series. I loved the first movie. I I was just like on the fence about the second movie, but I was like, I barely recognize the second movie, but I'm like, it's there, it exists, even though I don't like necessarily like what they did in it. And so like how John is saying that she feels like a second season would completely like make it worse. I felt like a series in general was going to make it worse from what the second movie was. So yeah, yeah but in I, your opinion, what you saw of it did make it worse. One hundred percent. I don't even know if I could go back and like rewatch the series, knowing like where it leads to. But I'm sorry, John. Oh, it's know, John's I mean, time, I and I don't want to it too. <laughs> no, it's fine. I I totally thought about going back and like rewatching it because I was like, I mean, I mean, you know, I was super young when Sex in the City came out, so I never like actually got to like sit and like watch it from beginning to end. You know, I saw a few episodes here and there, and then I saw the movies. But, like, it was just so iconic for, you know, when it came out and what it was doing, you know? And, like, the fashion just, oh, amazing. Mm -hmm. But just at the end of the final episode, Carrie takes Big's ashes to Paris and she spreads them on the bridge where they finally get together or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, which is so sweet. But she texts Samantha, who lives in London, I think. And she goes, hey, I'm in Paris. Let's have dinner. And Samantha's like, tomorrow good? And they're like, yep, sure. So, you know, and then Carrie gets her own podcast. And then she starts smooching with the producer of the podcast. I get that they wanted to show these women growing and being different and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, times have changed since the 90s when the show aired. I get it. I feel like they could have done it in a better way. But I think that the finale of the show should just be the series finale and no more. And just like that, no more sex in the city, like nothing. I just think that where it ended, you know, Carrie's moving on from big, you know, Miranda is moving on and finally being happy. Charlotte is, you know, coming to terms with, you know, all the things going on in her life. You know, I just think that it would be a huge mistake on HBO's part if they made a second season. Well, HBO loves making mistakes when it comes to the Sex and City franchise, so why not? <laughs> I mean, Sarah Jessica Parker has already said that she doesn't want Kim Cattrall back, so I don't know yeah. like how they would even... Kim Cattrall doesn't that. even want to come back, though, either. Good for her. She saw the writing on the wall. I'm so mad. Like, I don't know why. Like, because my mom's like, I've accepted it now at this point, and I'm like, I just mm-hmm. can't... Like, I've watched every single episode, obviously not when I was younger, because like Jonna, I was way too Mm -hmm. effing young. Like I remember my mom watching it and I would like pass by to use the bathroom. She'd be like, close your eyes. And I'm like, oh, shit. okay." but it's like (laughs) I own the DVD sets. I've seen every single episode. Like I used to quote them. I'd be like, yo, any situation with a man, there is like a Sex and the City episode for that. And it's like. Mm -hmm and the two and i'm sorry to like go on and on but it's like the two major relationships in that show were carrie and big and miranda and steve we've seen them grow you've rooted for them you've wanted them to be together and i get people change but it's like again in a real life setting maybe this wouldn't have happened it's like for the show though they have to make it spicy we can't show three grown women in their long-term relationships we have to obviously add some sort of drama to the mix and at this point yeah. if they do a second season then just break up charlotte and harry because at this point you're just saying we don't look, know how to write look, with spouses you know look if they break up charlotte and harry i will 
effing riot, okay? That's how I, I felt about Stephen Miranda. New York City That's how I felt about Stephen Miranda. <laughs> you know what? I, you know, I've sat and thought about it, and Miranda never deserved Steve. Like, no, she was not- always putting him off, and I really right. think that she only got with him because she was, because they had Brady, if I'm being Look, 100% honest. Listen. I understand that, like, Steve it w- is so much better on, like, and Miranda never truly deserves Steve, but do you know how much I cried in the first movie when he cheats on her, and they try yeah, to, right. and they try and do the whole, like, are we gonna get back together, and they meet on the bridge, and there's just the relief of them being back together and realizing they want to move past, and I'm like, yes, 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 and it's like, yeah. I just, like, I can't. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> the same break as Charlotte and Harry because Charlotte and Harry are freaking meant to be. I love them as a couple, as parents. Yeah. They are my, they're like next to like Carrie and Big, they're like my number two couple, like legitimately. I love them. And if they break up them, if they do a second season, I swear I'm flying to New York City and going to whatever hell studio they recording in and telling them something how I feel. Okay. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Listen, like Harry and Big were never my number one couple, though, on that show. Steve and Miranda. It was Steve and Miranda, Charlotte and Harry, and then Carrie and Big. Actually, no, it was Steve Miranda, Charlotte and Harry, Samantha and Smith Jared, and then Carrie and Big. Smith Jared. Right? I'm really surprised. Katie, would you go ahead and rank your favorite couples on Sex and the City? I'm sorry. I don't this mean is what to it's like, like go when you guys talk on. about gaming and Star Wars for me. I know. That's the thing. Like, no, it's great. Like, we all have our things, and sometimes we have to listen to each other be excited about stuff mm-hmm. that we have no idea what's going on. But mm-hmm. literally, Katie, I just would like get a message, Katie. Like, you can go if you want. I, know, I, saw, the look, I saw the look on Katie's face, and I was like, I feel bad because it's like I haven't even watched this. Like, I haven't even watched and just like that. But I don't know. I felt like Sex and the City <laughs> meant a lot like to me. When the first movie came out, my mom and my best friend and I literally went to the theaters to see it. Like we love the series and I don't know. I just it's, it's like right. they, they're they're this reviving everything. Place. They're reviving everything for like no reason. I forget what else yeah. I saw recently got revived and I'm like I think I think someone said Katie said like hire new writers for shit like do something new why are we continuously yeah. trying to dip into like old things because okay, they make money I and will... nostalgia makes money mm-hmm. yes I will say like it is it is our fault because the amount of things that get made that don't have some sort of established fan base or something that we already know none of us watch like that's we have done this to ourselves because they put out stuff and we're like i mean there are there's a there's a small faction of people who look for new but the majority of money makers come from the reboots and even that's part of the reason that that we have the superhero stuff that we have because they're established characters even if they're established in the comic books you know like that's we've kind of I mean, I'm as guilty as anybody about like, oh, I don't know what that is, so I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> Just look at like Game of Thrones. Oh, it was already books. Cool. I don't have to come up with anything myself. That's mm-hmm. easy. I could just make that a movie, slap some CGI on it and call it a day. I mean, that is true. We saw once like the writers of Game of Thrones got to a point where they didn't even have the books. It's like they didn't even know what to do. Oh, no, but clearly. And- yes. So... <laughs> I think we've gotten into this really bad habit of not like, I say that not because I don't make movies. So I'm just being an armchair, you know, judger over here, Mm -hmm. but it's so easy when the source material is already written for you. Like all you have to do is stay true to the source material and boom, you're done. Like Harry Potter. Oh, I got to make Harry Potter movies. Well, the books are already written. Cool. Done. Oh, Hunger Games. Cool. That was a book. Done. Oh, Twilight. Also a book. Easy peasy. Slap that last book in half. Make it two movies. Call it a day. Yeah. I mean, not for nothing. Just to kind of like bookend this. The Sex and the City show was inspired by a book. So. Was it? (laughs) True. Oh, man. Someday we'll be sitting here talking about the show that was inspired by Tia's book. 
Oh no! It's <laughs> how we put a bookend on all of this. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tia, if they want to follow you on, you know, the, the social medias, where do we find you? Uh, on Twitter and Instagram, I am at TC underscore Stark. And if you are listening to this podcast, I will actually post on my Twitter where you can find my two books that I self-published. But just let you know, I'm 31 now. I wrote them when I think I was like 22, 23. Well, that's when they were published. I'd worked for years. So mostly I was a teenager writing these things. So they're freedom. they're both written in fir first person, which I don't even write in anymore. I write in third person. So I think that's why I'm mostly like very like, ah, about them because I don't even write in first person anymore. But listen, if you feel like reading them, I will post them on my Twitter. <laughs> I'm just going to give you $5. <laughs> sorry, you know, now no. I need the five bucks. So I'll take it. <laughs> I feel like at some point I want to out the person who said, I'm just going to give you $5. <laughs> Do not crush a creator's soul by paying them to not support their work. Please, if you take anything away from this podcast, please buy the book, pretend you read it, never, ever offer someone money to say you're not going to read it. Please, Just let it die you. on your shelf like I let my books do. Thank exactly. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. The cue, the jingle, and coming up, all the stuff and things and ways to follow us. Stay kind of nerdy. We love you. The Kind of Nerdy Girls is produced by our wonderful patrons like Leanne, Kayla Allen, Michelle Hamilton, Samantha Miller, Clay Swain, Erina Miller, and music is provided by Paul Miller. That's a lot of Millers. If you'd like to be a producer of our show, all you have to do is throw a few bucks our way on Patreon to help us keep the show going. Look for the Kinda Nerdy Girls on Patreon or go to kindanerdynetwork.com where you can also find our merch. I'm KJ. Thanks so much for listening. Stay Kinda Nerdy.